Hey everyone, how's it going? Chris Gildart here, and today I'm reviewing the Samurai Warriors title that I have the most nostalgia for. I put over 100 hours into the PS2 version, and over 75 hours into the Xbox 360 version, so, you know, I'm a little experienced with this title. Samurai Warriors 2 tried to do everything the first one did and more. Toei went a step further in differentiating the series from Dynasty Warriors. The stages felt more individual than Dynasty Warriors 5, which was the most current Warriors game at the time. But I have to wind back a little bit. What did I think about this game? Sure, it tried to do a lot more than the first entry, but did it execute that properly? Well, let's find out with the first pro. Oh man, this looks awesome. You've probably been seeing the footage during the intro, but unlike Dynasty Warriors 5's Xbox 360 port, Samurai Warriors 2 did not remain in Japan. Last year, I made an entire con around the missed opportunity of the localized 360 port of vanilla Dynasty Warriors 5. Being able to play this game in HD is amazing. This also had an HD release on PS3, but that was never released in North America. But you know what? I'm alright with that. We can at least play this on the 360. Plus, the PS3 isn't region locked like the 360, so if you want to import it, you absolutely can. Plus, having an achievement list helps extend the playtime of this game. There are a couple of achievements that you won't unlock naturally, and I'm much more willing to go for them on the 360 than I am on the PS2. And it's really just getting two bodyguards. But the additional gamer score can go a long way. Again, this was another point I complained about in Dynasty Warriors 5 not making its way overseas on the 360. While getting footage, I played so much of this. I was still missing some achievements and didn't complete some of the characters' dream stages. So of course, I wasn't just getting footage, I was also playing cleanup. And I love the fact that not only was I able to play the same file from my childhood, but I was able to play it in HD. God! Survival Mode makes a return from the first entry, but it's sadly more dumbed down. Instead of trying to make it as far as you could, you have little missions on every floor. This is mostly just killing 50 enemies, defeating a famous officer or two, but the big kicker is that the whole floor is visible right from the start. The whole fun of playing Survival Mode was not only surviving the waves of enemies and racking up the kills, it was also trying to find the stairs to the next floor. I rarely started up this mode for fun. It was only to get those bodyguards that I mentioned earlier. This is the only way to unlock them and the only way to get the last two achievements. Because of that fact, I may never 100% this game. Plus, there's no traps or anything like that. That was another thing that was really fun from the first game's survival mode. Trying to avoid the traps, survive loads of enemies on every floor, and trying to find the stairs to the next level. It was so much more fun than this. The entire soul has just been sucked out of survival mode. Pro. One of the cool things that Samurai Warriors 2 did was make each character even more different from each other by adding special moves. This was the first Warriors title to remove the ranged attack button and implement special moves. By holding the right bumper and pressing either X or Y, you can execute one of the two special abilities each character has. Some can be made stronger or do multiple moves by pressing X or Y up to three times. But that's not the only thing. Combos have been changed again, this time for the better. Rather than every character having the same 8-hit combo style, they've added two other combo styles to the mix. The characters that are able to extend or power up their special abilities with three presses of the X or Y buttons only have two extensions per charge attack rather than three. Then there are the 12-hit combo characters. These ones have no extensions to the combo and instead have a longer string of normal attack with up to eight single strike charge attacks. Personally, I'm annoyed at the first entry characters who were bumped down to a two charge attack string, but it all makes sense. And it makes each character feel even more individual. Not only that, but the combos are no longer dependent on the weapon you equip your character, but your level. Which means by the end of the first stage with a character, you could potentially have a couple more normal and charge attacks than your basic combo set. All the new characters that were added in this entry feel even more special thanks to this differentiation. I really like playing as all of the new characters. I almost liked it more than playing as some of the returning characters. These different combo styles would become an ongoing mechanic of the Samurai Warriors series and I love it. God! Empire's titles are truly hit and miss. You can never be guaranteed that one will be great. Samurai Warriors 2 is an incredible letdown, considering it came out after the really good Dynasty Warriors 5 Empires. There were a lot of things that did the same. Things like having separate scenarios so you can choose from the different era that you wanted to fight in, being able to delegate and choose which tactics you wanted to use, and even having events that will randomly happen for your kingdom. But what Samurai Warriors 2 Empires does wrong is everything else. This title came out prior to the Extreme Legend 
expansion, which I believe to be the wrong choice. You're missing out on some great characters that could have added content to the game. Also, I feel like there's no uniqueness to playing as the generic officers thanks to their moveset already being used for the custom characters in the first entry. Speaking of custom characters, this entry added a little bit more selection to the options, but what it does add is insulting to say the least. You are able to choose from some models similar to the first entry, but now you can also select generic officer models as well, making it even more lackluster to play as the generics during story mode. You're also able to select more than just the sword, spear, and naginata now, but you're not given the freedom to select anyone's weapons. There are many playable characters' movesets you just won't be able to equip your custom character with. You might have more to select from the first entry, but it's still just sword, spear, and Naginata style weapons. All in all, the Empire's entry is just an utter disappointment. It could have just carried over the same custom character set from Dynasty Warriors 5, and I wouldn't have been as harsh on it. But it's not nearly as fun as the vanilla entry, and for some reason I find the combat just slow. I just can't force myself to even try it with this game. Pro. Just like the Extreme Legends expansion before, Samurai Warriors 2's add-on comes with many characters and stages to extend your playtime with this entry. On top of that, this is the first and only Extreme Legends expansion available for Xbox users. You can even still download the expansion, which means if you haven't experienced this entry yet, you can still get all of the extra characters. This expansion adds Yoshimoto, Motochika, Toshiie, Katsuie, Grecia, and Kojiro, giving you even more to play. The first Extreme Legends expansion added four new characters to the story, while this one adds six in total. Plus, this increases the level cap for both player characters and bodyguards. As well, on the 360 version, you get even more achievements thanks to these new additions. Motochika would go on to become one of my favorite characters, and I swear, the whole music thing has nothing to do with it. Toshi Ie is also really cool. Taking in a sword and two spears, this guy's moveset is bonkers. We also knew from the start that Kojiro and Katsuie would become playable thanks to their unique models in the vanilla version. Gracia is the odd addition here. I don't really like her moveset. I find her really weak, and I don't think she really adds anything to the story. Increasing the level cap makes me want to play as my other characters even more. I maxed out Keiji and Yukimura when I was younger, and now I can play them again and level them up even more. And I mean, I kind of have to if I want to take on the challenges of getting the fifth weapons now. All in all, the Extreme Legends expansion adds a lot more than what was expected based on the previous entry and most other entries in general. God! Probably the worst thing of all is all the missteps with this entry. I have a long laundry list of disappointments. No, you are not leaving this video. You will stay and you will be angry with me. First off, let's talk about the costumes. The first Samurai Warriors had alternate costumes when you beat their story. It was so much fun to go back into these stages with the altered models. And they were usually different enough to warrant a whole other playthrough of the story. Plus, their portraits would change to match their costumes. I wish this was done in all Warriors games, especially with all the DLC we've seen in modern titles. But Samurai Warriors 2 has color palette changes. And really weird color palette changes at that. I absolutely hate them and never played using them because they were all so weird. Hair and skin color changing in all of them just turned me off from wanting to use them. Let's also mention another thing that I really enjoyed in the first game, branching story missions. During a character's story, you'll come across a stage that branched out the progression. Usually these stages can be completed in two different ways. Maybe if you're retreating, you instead take out the enemy commander and that leads you down an alternate path. Samurai Warriors 2 doesn't have that at all, instead opting for a linear story progression with an optional dream stage at the end. Let's not also forget that the game has missing characters. Goemon Ishikawa and Kunoichi are nowhere to be seen, and Yoshimoto was taken out until Extreme Legends. But why return Yoshimoto and not a cool character like Goemon or Kunoichi? That is incredibly disappointing. Not only that, but there are two characters who just don't have a story at all. Okuni and Ranmaru are only playable in free mode and survival. Why? What's the point in that? Why not remove them as well instead of leaving them for no stupid reason at all? Why didn't they get a story mode with Extreme Legends? All I have are unanswered questions. Why? I just... I don't know what to say with this. I'm going to be honest. Samurai Warriors 2 still holds a place in my heart. 
Playing this game again and catching up on all the stuff that I didn't get to, or even just grinding out some level ups was fun to do. Sure, the Empire's title for this entry leaves a lot to be desired, and the survival mode is dumbed down, and there are both characters missing from the story, and just missing in general, but what we do have is a great entry in the Samurai Warriors series. It solidified a lot of the mechanics that would become mainstays in the future games. The Extreme Legends expansion did expand a lot on the base game and increased replayability tenfold, plus the fact that the Xbox 360 port made its way to the West. That is probably the one fact that makes me the happiest. That's why I'm giving Samurai Warriors 2, along with the Extreme Legends expansion and Empires, a 9 out of 10. If the Empires title just did everything that Dynasty Warriors 5 did with custom characters and sped up the combat a little bit more, I would have enjoyed it a lot more than I did. I would have also liked it if survival mode was left the same as the first entry. Also, the omission of Goemon and Kunuichi is sad, and the fact that Okuni and Romaru are playable but don't have a story devoted to them is even sadder. Though I miss the costumes and the splitting story stages, it's not too important. I hope the future games will just build upon what Samurai Warriors 2 delivered. And I just hope that the next entry leaves me with as much joy as this one. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you're not already, and click the bell to be notified for every upload. If you want to know what I'm up to, you can check out my social media links down in the description below. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can also check out the Patreon, where there are a few tiers of rewards that could interest you. Let me know in the comments if you own the Xbox 360 version of the game, and did you get Extreme Legends? I kind of got it late, so I didn't actually finish a lot of the new stories. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I will see you all down in the comments.